Workplace Futures 2013 took place on the 12th of February at the Crystal Siemens Building in London's Docklands. The theme for the conference was Strategic Partnership, Securing the Future for FM. We spoke to some of the speakers and delegates attending the event about some of the key issues raised during the day. This film looks at getting young people into the facilities management industry, apprenticeship schemes, competency frameworks and professionalising FM. I think young people today are, are having a hard time trying to decide what they do when they leave school or leave university. Um, to my mind, the FM industry is an, an immensely exciting area, a tremendous variety of activities that go on that would be really, really attractive to young people. I mean, the apprenticeship schemes are always a good thing, and you know, we don't have enough of those in the industry. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great way for bringing people into what is actually you know, quite an exciting uh, industry. <laughs> you know, it may not always seem so, but uh, it's got a lot of diversity to it. Um, so getting those people through with uh, proper professional qualifications um, will certainly help future um, leaders of FM uh, to know that they've got people with sound, competent skills to actually deliver. And there's no reason why they can't work their way right up through to strategic level. Yeah, and I, if I can add, add to that, I, I mean, I think what you're seeing obviously is that any, every industry changes and you see people coming through from, from the school lever all the way through. I mean, RSS members, of course, um, tend to have um, a, a recognition of delivering a good quality of service. But I think what, what's being implied now is that there's a slightly different range of, of skill set being required now. So apprentices are definitely going to be a good thing. But there's probably more business skills being required by the FM industry, you know, a requirement now to interact with the wider business, not just be the guy who, who delivers a service on a building. And I think that's coming, but, you know, it takes a little time for people to, to make the adjustment. I think it is because I think it's been a really misunderstood profession and you've had people coming, maybe they were office managers or maybe they were engineers or estate managers or, and they've all converged on this thing called FM and yet there's so little agreement about what it is and, and what you need to be a good facilities manager and increasingly I think with strategic partnerships and things like that it's less about monitoring a contract and monitoring the, mm. the day to day detail of how a service is done and much more about you know supplier relationship management understanding what the business needs and making that transition to therefore what the FM service should be so I think it's undefined as yet and I think we've got an opportunity to, to define it in such a way that it attracts some exciting people in. Mm. I think it's vital and if you look at some other professions and, and how they've done it um, you can look at um, you know the finance profession for example and it's um, it's been around um, for a considerable number of years and they've developed that framework um, over a number of decades um, and one of the things that they do particularly well is that you know, they start at a very early age. Um, FM, because it's a, a, a more new profession, is only just coming to terms with that. And I'll give you an example. You know, you can go and ask any, any uh, child at sort of 12, 13, 14 years of age when they're choosing their options, what do you want to be when you leave school? And you'll hear things like, I want to be a doctor, a nurse, a teacher, an accountant, a lawyer, all those kind of things, because they're very established professions. You won't hear them say, I want to be a facilities manager. Um, and that's what we need to change. And one way of doing that is by educating young people what FM is all about and then creating those structured pathways through education in schools. And that's one of the things that, that we're doing as a, as, a, as a professional body is creating that pathway through education. So making sure that we have the courses and the education embedded in the education framework from school age all the way through as far as people want to take it in their careers, you know, whether that's a degree or a master's degree or other stuff beyond that, then that's one of the things that we need to do. It's not a five minute fix. It will take time before you can ask a 12, 13 year old, what do you want to do when you leave school? And they say facilities manager, but I'm not going to rest until they do. I think BIFM is doing work on competencies, Workplace Law is doing work on competencies. Um, the research that we did last year for Think FM for the uh, Think FM 2012 conference, that really did indicate there was a link there between high performing companies and companies that use competency frameworks. So again, I think it's well worth looking at. There's very few people choose to be an FM traditionally. Uh, they don't, you don't grow up thinking I'm going to be an FM. Uh, I certainly didn't. A lot of people end up there. And, and I guess the sad part about it was traditionally in some big corporates, 
uh, FM was the Siberia. If you'd, uh, if you'd slipped up or dirtied your bib in core business, you ended up in facilities management. I think the size of, of the industry nowadays, the complexity of the contracts um, and the required competence, as you say, means that we're attracting uh, new and diverse types of people into the industry now. These are complex, big, multinational uh, contracts with, with, uh, with a huge level of, of client interaction, diversity and, and, and challenges. And I think for the first time we're seeing all kinds of new people coming into the industry, which is really exciting. Um, in terms of competency framework, certainly, I think, I think it's about professionalising the industry. Yeah, um, I think it's purported to be a profession. I certainly can't find it when, uh, when I'm trying to select uh, my job type or industry within an insurance form, for example. But to truly have it as a, as a, as a recognised profession, I think we need to put those sorts of things in place. We learn from our customers, so um, uh, our DNA is around technical environments. Um, and we provide facility services from great organisations. And when we work with GSK, um, we have to have the competency in, in these environments. So we develop competency measures because as we step into these customer environments that have got regulatory impact, we've got to have the competency assessment right down to operator level. So the answer is yes, but we bring it into our organisation from our DNA. The industry is, is an immature industry and it is changing. So I think. There is a change in competency, there is a change in training and developing in FM. Can it move fast enough, I think, is the issue, and can FM find the right levels and layers of people to interact with these international customers, with these international issues, I think is a big issue. So I think training, development um, is really important. I think there should be some sort of body which um, works with the government, with large corporations, to help promote FM. Um, most groups uh, or verticals in, in the UK have uh, industry lobby groups and that would really help, I think, bring FM up the agenda. At the moment it seems that FM's happy to sit in the background and just provide support rather than that, that strategic real drive uh, to add value, help people save money and help the economy grow again. So you've, got to, you've really got to get together. I think the organisations that work in FM must work together. Maybe the FMA could um, could act as a much stronger mouthpiece. Need money though. I think um, around apprentices, we're really passionate about doing it, but it goes back to the core of our culture and our ethos, which is about promoting um, and getting young, aspiring people to do better in the workplace. Therefore, we're very drawn to the challenges around employability issues for young people in the UK, and it's something we do naturally. I think every organisation just needs to say to themselves, we all need to support our young people, we all need to do things around apprentices, we all need to do things around young people coming out of university, we all need to employ our young people, make sure we've got the best talent. As an industry, it's a real opportunity for us. We should be showcasing all the fantastic apprenticeships in the UK, our industry should leave that.